How's everybody? Are you blessed? <laughs> Whoa, glory. You know, God delights in the drunkenness of his saints. <laughs> Nothing worse than a straight Christian, man. <laughs> in the presence of God is fullness of joy. And the joy of the Lord is our what? Strength. That's why the word says, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might, not your own. You weak in worship, you weak in power. Amen? Amen? If you're weak in worship, you're weak in power. That's why you got to worship till you drop. Amen. Come on, women go out there and shop till they drop, right? Amen. I know my wife does, praise God. <laughs> Glory. <laughs> Viv's worse. You kidding me? We'll be praying for Aaron. <laughs> uh, whew, glory. Uh, we're going to get through tonight. God, it got hot in here. All right. <laughs> yeah, my glasses are fogging up, man. What's <laughs> yeah, thank you, Papa. I needed the I yeah. Who we Second Corinthians chapter twelve. Ah. <laughs> we have been talking about how mankind has fallen from reality. And there are three realities in three dimensions. We're going to get this right tonight. I'll probably get it right because I'm good and drunk. <laughs> dimensions are from here. To home. We are in the first dimension. Does everybody got it? Which we call the kingdom of self. The matrix. The second dimension is the kingdom of Satan. And the third dimension is the kingdom of God. There are three dimensions associated with the three chambers of the tabernacle. Because everything revolves around the tabernacle of God. But the first reality is in the third dimension where God is. The second reality is where Satan's kingdom is. Does everybody got it? And the third reality is here. That's why Jesus had to come. To bring a port called eternal port. That's why Jesus is the way, truth, and life. So you and I could have access to the first reality and become children of reality. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 2. Would you read it with me? I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago, whether in body I do not know or whether out of body I do not know, God knows such a one was caught up to the what? Third, Third heaven. heaven. What did he mean? Third what? Dimension. But what? First reality. And I know such a man, whether in body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows how he was caught up into paradise and heard inexpressible words which is not lawful for a man to utter he couldn't speak them of such a one i i will boast yet of my myself i will not boast except in my infirmities so we see paul had access to the first reality because of the price of christ does everybody understand that and Matthew 27. Each reality, each dimension has a veil, just like the veils of the tabernacle. That's why you and I were born with veils on our eyes and hearts. Amen? 
We talked about the dimensional split that happened because Lucifer was removed from the throne room of God because there was one reality. Somebody got it. In fact, when Adam and Eve were on the earth, they saw God face to face. They saw all the angels. Everybody got it. In fact, when Adam was created, the angels and Lucifer had to submit to Adam. When the Lord removed Adam or Lucifer from the first reality from the third dimension, it caused a split, a dimensional <coughs> rift that created the second reality and second dimension where the kingdom of Satan is. Is everybody okay? Grab hold. <clears throat> oh, glory. It says in the Genesis 1-1 that, that, and you don't have to go there. In the beginning, God created the what? Heavens and the earth. But remember, it wasn't until Adam fell Amen? That established another veil. When Adam fell, he no longer could see God. He could only hear him. He could no longer see the serpent or the angels because another dimension had come. Now we have three dimensions and three realities. Matthew 27, is everybody there? In verse 45. So we are going to talk about the final veil today. Oh, hallelujah. Now the word says very powerfully that the veil is removed from me and you when we come into Christ. Actually, it's removed in the second chamber. When you are baptized in the Holy Spirit, that veil is removed. In the first chamber called the outer courts, it's a process takes longer because we should be fighting to get to the second chamber. And the second chamber is where you become empowered by the Holy Spirit so that you can fight into the second dimension. Has everybody got it? That's why you and I, Jesus gave us the formula. He said, you must deny yourself, right? Pick up the cross. When you pick up the cross, what happens when you pull the cross out of the ground? It becomes a sword. People always think, well, I got to bear the burden. No, it's got nothing to do with it. This is a dimensional fight. You and I are warriors fighting in a warfare, attacking the second dimension and the second reality, pulling down strongholds and principalities and wickedness in heavenly places, assisting the angels working on our behalf by binding all other principalities that are coming against the angels working on our behalf. God says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Now it's because people don't know how to spiritually fight. Constantly calling on Jesus. And Jesus said, man, I came to bring you a sword. Use it. We'll get to here. Matthew 27, verse 45. <laughs> Snap. Is everybody there? 27, 45. Hike. Let's speak it. Now from the sixth hour until the ninth hour, there was darkness over the land. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of those who stood there, when they heard it, thought that he had said, This man is calling for Elijah. Immediately one of them ran and took a sponge and filled it with sour wine and put it on a reed and offered it to him to drink. And the rest said, let him alone. Let us see if Elijah will come to save him. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yield up his spirit. Wow. Then what? Then behold the what? The veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth quaked, and the rocks were split. And the graves were open. They were open for three days. And many of the bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised, but they didn't become alive yet. 
These were the saints that accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior during Jesus' ministry. These were not patriarchs. or from. These were during a time where Jesus was on the earth and they accepted him as Lord and Savior. They died. Is everybody okay? Praise God. And so it says then, in verse 53, And coming out of the graves, when? After his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. This was symbolic to the final veil event. Everything that God speaks about, because this Bible, which is a, a manual, we do not talk about religiosity. Jesus never was about religion. In fact, he was against religion because the word religion means bondage. He was about kingdom. It always says he was about the, king, the father's business, kingdom business. It's about a kingdom with a king, a creator to where you and I came from. Amen? That's why we love to feel good, right? Because that's why they call him the what? Most high. <laughs> yeah. Symbolic to the final veil event. It says here that the earth would shake or quake. Rocks would split. Graves would open. Bodies would be raised. Entering the holy city. Which is all a part the end event of entering into the first reality. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. First Thess 4.13, are you ready? Let's speak it. But I don't want you to be an idiot, I mean ignorant. <laughs> Brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sour as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. Now, didn't this happen already once? That's what we just read. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. The Lord himself will descend from the heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. This is the process to the final veil. Is everybody with me? But you see that it says that those who are dead in Christ will rise first and so forth. In other words, entering the first dimension. In 1 Corinthians 15. First Corinthians 15, please. <clears throat> the process to the final veil. Why? Because that one that allowed me a new access ripped. By the price of Jesus. Jesus is the word who became flesh. It's a name above all names. But his word is above the name. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 50. Let's speak it together, please. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be what? Changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. This is called the rapture. For this corruption, corruptible must put on incorruptible, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your sting? O oh, Hades, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. See, they were changed into his likeness. The word says that when you and I awake, we'll be like him. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5.
the process to the final veil, that final ripping. Second Corinthians chapter 5. <clears throat> verse 16. And you certainly don't want to miss the rapture, which is the next feast to be fulfilled. It's called the Feast of Trumpets. And only Jesus could fulfill those feasts. So one of the things that God's purpose is now is to bring, that's why we say, pray that prayer, thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Right now the first reality is in you. Say the first reality is in me. That's how you are born again. But eventually this is going to tear away and you're going to get your first reality body. That's what we just talked about in a twinkling of an eye. You will be changed. You will have your first reality body restored to you. <laughs> One of God's purposes is right now he's bringing, that's why we pray again, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven because the kingdom of God is within you according to the first reality, even though we're in the third dim uh, first dimension. Amen? So in this, because the dimensions go from here to home, so in this, eventually, everything's going to tear away so that first reality is restored. And every, no more dimensional walls, no dimensional veils, all one reality called eternity. <clears throat> Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians 5, 16. So you definitely don't want to miss the bus out if you're in sin. You'll be left behind. Verse 16, therefore, from now on, we do not regard anyone according to the flesh, even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a what? New creation. How can you be a new creation? Because you've been restored to first reality within. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have what? Become new. Becoming new. Everything's becoming new. No, all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us a ministry of reconciliation. That is, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. We are children of reality as ambassadors of Christ. As though God were pleading through us we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, in him. New creations, God in us, child, children, sons and daughters, and servants. Remember, the three chambers represent each function. The first chamber, known as the outer court of the tabernacle, you become a child. The next chamber you enter through the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you become sons and daughters. The third chamber you enter in, you become a servant. And that's where you will become kingship and warrior. Is everybody okay? In Matthew 24. And so then you can review it. Or you can always get it on eternallibrary.org. Or you can... Get a CD. Matthew 24, verse 3. Final veil. Bringing the first reality. Bringing in the first reality. Glory. Matthew 24, and verse 3. Is everybody there? Let's speak it, please. Now, as Jesus said on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, tell us when these things will be and what will be the sign of your coming and of the what? End of the age. It will be the end of the age of grace. In other words, grace is God's plan. There's no such thing as, you know, people always go, oh, we're, we're saved by grace. It's God's unmerited favor. It's got nothing to do with God's unmerited favor, it's God's unmerited love. You earn God's favor. 
Hello? In fact, the word grace means the plan. It's the plan of escape. Grace is God's plan for you and I to escape the deception of the devil and the wrath of God. So that's why people have fallen from grace. Why? Because they fall from God's plan. Amen? Anyways, that's a whole other teaching. You can find it on eternallibrary.org. <laughs> and Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one what? Deceives you. Satan's greatest weapon is deception and its power is fear. For many will come in my name, especially all those Christians that are wolves, and saying, I am the Christ and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be what? Famines. There will be pestilence. And there will be what? Earthquakes in what? Various places. Why? Because the earth is shaking, wanting to be changed. Because it's corrupted, it's defiled. He said, these are the, all the what? These are the beginning of what? Sorrows. Sorrow. The beginning of sorrows. This is where I truly believe that seals are broken according to Revelation. Seals are broke first. And it it's, uh, it's the beginning of sorrow, sorrows or the breaking of seals and tearing the veil of creation. Remember, all of creation must be torn. It's the veil of creation, the first dimension and the third reality here must be torn. God must tear this whole place apart. Everything must burn. Everything must go. In Hebrews chapter 12, So we are in the beginning of birth pangs. But birth pangs is the area of shaking. The earth is groaning. You know, the earth actually desires to go into tribulation. <clears throat> Hebrews 12. Hallelujah. Uh, verse 22. Everybody there? But you have come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, the what? Heavenly, Heavenly Jerusalem to an innumerable company of angels. So he's not talking about something on the earth, is he? No. To the general assembly and the church of the firstborn who are registered in heaven, to God the judge of all, to the spirits of just men made perfect, to Jesus the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than that of Abel. See that you do not refuse him who speaks. For if they did not escape who refused him who spoke on earth, much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him who speaks from heaven, whose voice then, what? Shook the earth. But now he has promised, saying, what? Yet once more I shake not only the earth, but also the what? Heavens. The other dimensions. The other realities. Now this, yet once more, indicates the what? Removal of those things that are being shaken as of things that are made, that the things which cannot be shaken may what? Remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a what? Consuming fire. The shaking is to remove those things that are not worthy. Amen? You and I will enter beyond the veil. 
the shaking is going to tear things apart or rip the veil, the, the final veil, the creation veil, the dimensional final veil. And then we will see the city of Jerusalem come from heaven, which will be reconciled back home. In 2 Peter chapter 3, we are in the process of the final veil being torn. Second Pete 3, verse 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a what? Thief in the night in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Both the earth and the works that are in it will what? Be burned up. That's the final veil. Therefore, since all these things must be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness? Come on, read it with me. Looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be what? Dissolved, being on fire, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, looking forward to these things, be diligently to be found by him in peace without spot and blameless. And consider that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, as also our beloved brother Paul, according to the wisdom given to him, has written to you, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things in which are some things hard to understand, which untaught and unstable people twist to their own destruction, as they do also the rest of the scriptures. You therefore, beloved, since you know this beforehand, beware lest you also fall from your own steadfastness, being led away with what? The error of the wicked, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and to him be the glory in both now and forever. Amen. In other words, grow in the, in the grace, grow in his plan. Again, here he speaks about heaven and earth will be burned. It is the final veil of creation that will be burned, will be destroyed. And there will be a one reality and one dimension. In Romans chapter 8, <clears throat> oh, glory. Man, it's ought to put excitement in you just to know that this is in the process of happening right now. It ought to put fear in you too. Amen. What does the word say? Work out your salvation with fear and trembling. That there ought to be a reverence to God knowing that while this is going on, you don't want to be falling back into sin. Amen? That's why the word says, come out from among them and be separate and don't touch what is unclean. That's why he said, only those that are unspotted, unspotted, he's coming back for a pure, clean bride. Amen? Amen? Everybody at Romans 8? Praise God in verse 18. Would you read it with me, please? For I consider that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Wow, wait a minute. That's first reality, isn't it? Amen? The glory that's going to be revealed in us. Why? Because when we awake, we'll be like him. For the earnest expectation of creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God or the sons and daughters of reality. Even creation is waiting for me and you. It can't wait to be changed. That's where that veil is ripped. For the creation was subjected to fertility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope, because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of what? Corruption and the glorious liberty of the children of God. Who's that? Us. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pains and together until now. Not only that, but we 
also who have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption and the redemption of our what? Our body, our first reality body. Yes. No more aches and pains. I can play tennis on both sides. I can go scuba diving with no gear. I can dunk the basketball. Nice guy. Matthew 24, verse 29. We don't have to explain ourselves. We just think it. Boom, you're gone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> you won't have to say, speak to me. <laughs> I think there's an eternal nothing box. You'll all get that later. Matthew 24, verse, what I say, 29? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, let's go here. Verse 24, I mean 29. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened, the moon will not give its light, the stars will fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens will be what? That means God's going to come. And when he comes, he's going to push out all the second reality and second dimension and throw them into here. Thank God you won't be here, I hope. We'll be raptured by then. God willing. It says, then the sign of the Son of Man will appear where? In the heaven. And then all the tribes of the earth will mourn and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with the power and great glory. And he will what? Send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. And they will gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other end of heaven. Now learn the parable from the fig tree when it brings when its branch have already become tender and puts forth leaves, you know that summer is near. That's associated with Jerusalem. So you also, when you see all these things, know that it is near at the doors. Assuredly, I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away till all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. Again, I want to explain this. In other words, the Lord will come. He will be pushing out. He'll be forcing Satan's kingdom to come into this realm. They will become visible. He will gather his elect and remove them. That's called the rapture. Does everybody understand? And it says here that the fig tree, when the fig tree, that's Israel, when Israel became a nation in 1948, he said this generation by no means pass by. Until, and this will happen. Well, 1948 and a generation is 70 years, which means, you know, we don't know exactly the day and time and we're not quoting specific, but it's, if you add that up, it's 2018. So who knows, 2018, 2020, who knows what's what, but we're close. We are the generation to return of the Lord and a removal of the rapture. Remember, the next feast to be fulfilled is called the Feast of Trumpets, and only Jesus fulfills the seven feasts, which must be fulfilled. He fulfilled the first four. The next one's Feast of Trumpets, then you have the Feast of Atonement, then the Feast of Tabernacles. And they will be fulfilled in order. Is everybody okay? Praise God. So we see this is where all the powers will be shaken in heaven. Jesus begins... To remove the second dimension, the second reality of Satan's kingdom. Revelation 12. You came for a meal, right? We don't drink milk. Milk's for babies. Listen, I was brought up in never drinking milk. They put meat in a bottle. They deceived me. <laughs> <clears throat> Revelation 12, 
Revelation 12, verse 13. Is everybody there? Let's speak it now. Now, when the dragon saw that he'd been where? Cast to the earth. Hold on. That's the first dimension and the third reality. He what? Persecuted the woman who gave birth to the male child. In other words, the body of Christ, those who've been left behind. Because I'm going to tell you, there's going to be a lot of believers after they see the rapture. <laughs> and it's also associated with Jerusalem, Israel. Verse 14, but the woman was given two wings of a great eagle. And I believe that those two wings of a great eagle are also associated with Moses and Elijah, associated with the rapture. That she might fly into the wilderness to her place where she is nourished for what? Time and times and a half a time, which is three and a half years. Does everybody get it? Well, Revelation is seven years. Most likely, uh, when this occurs, we'll be in mid-tribulation. So tribulation is seven years. The first three and a half years is going to be a lot of uh, all kinds of other things going on, false prosperity, because it says when there's peace, peace, and all of a sudden, sudden destruction. So you may be, we may be in the first three and a half years already and don't even know it yet because we don't know what's been going on behind closed doors, but it will be associated with a seven-year treaty, which will be broken in midway. So we see here that uh, here she'll be nourished for a time and times and a half from the presence of the what? Serpent. That means the bride will go home. Does everybody understand that? For the last three and a half years. And then we'll return and kick butt. In verse 15, so the serpent spewed water out of his mouth like a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away by the flood. But the earth helped the woman and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon had spewed out of his mouth. And the dragon was enraged with the woman and he went to make war with the rest of her offspring, the rest of her offspring, those who were left behind, who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. So again, he says, all of a sudden the dragon, Satan's kingdom, was forced into the physical realm. Ooh. In other words, the Lord will remove them from the second dimension, second reality, Satan's kingdom, from the unseen reality to the seen. Go to Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2. It is time. Joel chapter 2. It's right next to Joel chapter 1. Hallelujah. In verse 1. Yeah, everybody's still turning pages. next to Daniel, Hosea, Daniel. It's in between. Uh, who's the next guy? Amos. And, ver and chapter 2, is everybody there in verse 1? Let's speak it. Blow the trumpet in Zion and sign an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming, for it is at hand, a day of darkness and gloominess a day of clouds and thick darkness, like the morning clouds spread over the mountains, a people come great and strong, like of whom has never been, nor will there ever be any such after them. And who are these people? They come from where? Second reality, second dimension. Even for many successive generations. A fire devours before them, and behind them a flame burns. The land is like the Garden of Eden before them, and behind them is a desolate wilderness. Surely nothing shall escape them. Why? This is Satan's kingdom has come into this realm. Their appearance is like the appearance of what? Horses. And like swift steads, so they run. With a noise like chariots. Over mountaintops they leap, like the noise of flaming fire that devours the stubble, like a strong people set in 
battle array. Before them, the people wrath and pain. All faces are drained of color. People are going to freak. You got to remember, many of these are half animal and half man. Many of these are giants. These are creatures because of the fallen angels who went into the daughters of men and produced offsprings. And remember, many of these who left their abode, angels that left, that, had, that were beautiful are now ugly as can be because God took their presence of beauty and they became creatures. That's why the fallen angels are known as beasts. That's why the book in, Revel, in, in Genesis 3 says, and the serpent was the most cunning what? Beast. Because he was an angel and he became a serpent. He's actually a shapeshifter also. But he, he can cloak himself in light because he comes as an angel of light and deceives people. But he's a shifter. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, let's go a little further. Uh, verse uh, 7. They run like mighty men. They climb the wall like men of war. Everyone marches in formation and they do not break ranks. They do not push one another. Everyone marches in his own column. Though they lunge between the weapons, they are not cut down. They run to and fro in the city. They run on the wall. They climb into the houses. They enter at the windows like a thief. The earth quakes before them. The heavens tremble. The sun and moon grow dark and the stars diminish their brightness. The Lord gives voice before his army for, he's, for his camp is very great. For strong is one who execute his word. For the day of the Lord is at hand, great and very terrible. Who can endure? Now therefore, says the Lord, turn to me with all of your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. So rend your heart and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness. And he relents from doing harm. Who knows if he will turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering or a drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Consecrate a fast. Call a sacred assembly. Gather the people. Sanctify the consecration. Congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children and nursing babes. Let the bridegroom go out from his chamber and the bride from her dressing room. Let the priests who minister to the Lord weep before the porch and the altar and let them say, spare your people, O Lord, and do not give your heritage to the reproach that the nation should rule over them. Why should they say among the peoples, where is their God. Wow. Does everybody understand what's happening? 1 Thessalonians 5. It's known as the day of the Lord, isn't it? Satan's kingdom is a whip. That's what he's going to use for wrath. That's what he's going to use for uh, the tribulation time. He'll use Satan's kingdom. To bring judgment on mankind. And then they'll destroy Satan's kingdom. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Glory. The final veil. Woohoo. Listen, we'll be watching this from heaven. You know. Popcorn and a full screen TV. We'll be rooting for the saints. <laughs> Not the New Orleans saints. That's why you bought me that jersey, huh? <laughs> That's why his name is Breeze. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. In verse 1, please. Let's speak it. But concerning the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I should write to you. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. For when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman 
and they shall not escape. Remember that there will be a seven-year treaty, and the first three and a half years will be a false peace. And then it will be broke. That treaty will be broke, and all, all hell will break out. Verse 4. But you, brethren, are not in darkness so that this day should overtake you as a thief. You are all sons of light and sons of the day. We are not of the night nor of the darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk are drunk at night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love as the helmet of the salvation. For God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we shall live together with him. Therefore, comfort each other and edify one another, just as you also are doing. And we urge you, brethren, to recognize those who labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake. Be at peace among yourselves. Revelation 20. Of tribulation. So everybody got it. We're to be removed. We are not accounted for the wrath of God, which is known as the day of the Lord. Remember, he will bring judgment. But after all of this, eventually, the final veil of creation will be burned. In Revelation chapter 20 and verse 1. Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven having the key to the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. He laid hold of the dragon. Why? Because he was here, right? He was in this realm. He was in this dimension. He was in this reality. He laid hold of the uh, dragon, the serpent of old, who was the devil and Satan, and bound him for how many years? 1,000 years. And he cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal on him so that he should deceive the nations no more till a thousand years were finished. But after these, thousands, after, these, after these things, he must be released for a little while. So what's going to happen is that's the fulfillment. So the Feast of Trumpets will remove the body of Christ. We'll be in the time of revelation. It'll be time of tribulation. Amen? Seven years. We'll be removed most likely, God willing, uh, in the middle of tribulation which will be fulfilling of the Feast of Trumpets. We will return with the Lord for the Feast of Atonement. And after the Feast of Atonement, which will be the Armageddon, the battle. And then after the Feast of Atonement will be the Feast of Tabernacles, where God will set up his place in Jerusalem for 1,000 years. After the 1,000 years, he will release Satan, and he'll kick his butt. He'll cook him. Send him in the, the, the lake of fire. And then he'll burn everything. Everything will be destroyed. Heaven and earth. And he'll rip around, rip away that final veil. And everything will be one reality. Let's go. Let's look at it. Are you ready? Hallelujah. Let's go a little further. Uh, let's see. In verse 4. Amen. And I saw thrones and they that sat on them and judgment was committed to them. Then I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their witness of Jesus and for the word of God, who had not worshipped the beast or his image and had not received his mark on their foreheads or on their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ for what? One thousand years. But the rest of the dead did not live again until a thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. In other words, the wicked will not be raised. They will, they will stay. In fact, they will stay in hell for a thousand years and then brought forth. Verse 6. Blessed and holy is he who has the part in the first resurrection over such the second death has no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. <laughs> Now when a thousand years has expired, Satan will be released from his prison and will go out to deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, whose number is as the sand, sand of the sea. They went up on the breath of the earth, 
and surrounded the camp of the saints and the beloved city, which is what? Jerusalem. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. The devil who deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are, and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Then I saw a great white throne and him who sat on it from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. And there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God, and the books were open. And another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to the works by the things which were written in the books. The sea gave up the dead who were in it, and death and Hades, hell, delivered up the dead who were in them also. And they were judged, each one according to his works. Then death and Hades was cast into the lake of fire, this is the second death. And anyone not found in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. See, when you give up your last breath, your name either stays in or is removed. Everyone's name is in the book of life when you enter. That's why children go home when they die. If they're aborted, everybody goes home. Except for an age of accountability. So when you give up your last breath, whether you're right with God or not, it determines whether your name stays in or it gets blotted out. Revelation 21. Is everybody okay? Are you getting this? Amen. Read this with me. Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also, there was no more sea. Then I what? Then I saw... Then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. Now, this is after the thousand years. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, Write, for those words are true and faithful. And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give of the fountain of the water of life freely to him who thirsts. He who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be a God, his God, and he shall be my son. But the cowardly, unbelieving, all uh, sex murderers, or unbelieving, abominable murderers, sexual, immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in a lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Then I saw one of the seven angels who had seven bowls filled with the seven last plagues came to me. Talked with me saying, come, I will show you the bride and the lamb's wife. Yes. Let's go a little further. And he carried me away in the spirit and showed me the great city, the what? Holy city, descending out from heaven, having the glory of God. Her light was as like a most precious stone, like jasper and stone, clear as crystal. Also, she had a great and high wall with 12 gates, 12 angels at the gates, and names were written on them, which are the names of the 12 tribes of Israel, the children of Israel. Three gates on the east, three gates on the north, three gates on the south, three gates on the west. Now the wall of the city had 12 foundations on them, were the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. And he who, wa who talked with me had a gold reed to measure the city and its gates, its walls. The city is laid out as a square, its length as great as its breadth. And he measured the city with a reed, 12,000 furlongs. Its length, breadth, and height are equal. I think that's around 1,500 miles. So you got 1,500 miles up, 1,500 miles wide, and 1,500 miles down. Big city. Then he measured its wall 140 cubic feet according to the measure of a man that is of an angel. And the construction of its walls was jasper and the city was pure of gold like clear glass. The foundations of the wall of the city adorned with all kinds of precious stones. The first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third Chaldean, the fourth emerald, the fifth uh, Sardinox, the sixth Sardius, the seventh 
uh, chrysolite, the eighth braille, the ninth topaz, the tenth something, <laughs> <laughs> crucifix, the eleventh gen, you know, and all the rest, man, you know. <laughs> Anyways, it was powerful. In verse 22. But I saw no temple in it, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. The city had need of had no need of the sun or of the moon to shine in it. Why? Because it was gone. For the glory of the Lord illuminated it. The Lamb is the light. So there's no stars, no planets, no nothing. We have now, the veil was ripped. The creation veil has been ripped. We have now entered the first reality. It's all one. And the nations of those who are saved shall walk in its light. And the kings of the earth bring their glory and honor into it. Its gates shall not be shut at all by day. There shall be no night there. Think about it. There's no night. There's no shadows either. Thank God. And they shall bring the glory and the honor of the nations into it. But there shall by no means enter it anything that defiles or causes an abomination or a lie, but only those who are written in the Lamb's book of life. Are right, you ready? I'm going to close in the next five verses. Chapter 22. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding from the throne of God and the Lamb. In the middle of its street and on either side of the river was a tree of life which bore 12 fruits, each tree yielding its, fr for its fruit every month. The leaves of the trees were for the healing of nations. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and the Lamb shall be in it. And his servants shall serve him. They shall see his face and his name shall be on their, what, foreheads. There shall be no night there. They need no lamp nor light of the sun, for the Lord God gives them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. Does everybody understand the final veil? It is the veil of creation. That dimensional veil will burn, and all reality will be one. One dimension, one reality. It's called eternity. Amen? <coughs> Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We look forward to going home. And we look forward to a change of body. Thank you so much. Let this seed that's been imparted be protected by the blood of Jesus and grow and bear fruit for your glory and bring to remembrance the reality of the first reality and the third dimension and why you came. So we pray, Father, your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And to Jesus be all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. amen. Be blessed and stay dressed. With you.